my name is Marianne Power and I'm the co-founder of the Posify Group. Thanks so much for joining us for our first mini course for 2020. We figured with everything going on in the world right now, there was no better time to be sharing with you some of our favorite evidence-based strategies from positive psychology on how you and your loved ones can look after their self-care during this time. Just like we look after our physical health, it is gonna be so important for us all to look after our mental health too. So let's dive on in. As I mentioned, I am Marianne and the co-founder of the Posify Group, which I established with my sister, Jenna. We so, fierce in our determination to share evidence-based strategies on how we can boost well-being and optimism and also live our most meaningful lives. And that's what we've dedicated our business to. I like to think of myself as a sneaker-wearing, spirit-dancing psychologist, and I'm raising my family here in Port Macquarie on the north coast in Australia. You can see in that picture our two goofy labradoodles, Max and Murphy, down by our favourite beach and lighthouse, and my boy Jack there as well. And when I'm not presenting courses like this, you might be finding me having spontaneous dance parties in my kitchen, I will confess, and yes... You are more than welcome to come and join us virtually or in person. <laughs> Let's get started. So in today's course, we're going to have a look at what stress is and how you can help to find some more calm in what can feel like a bit of chaos and overwhelm during these times. Then we're going to dive into three of my favorite well-being strategies from the science of positive psychology. And lastly, for those of you who feel like they need a little bit extra support, or even if you want to pop some numbers on the kitchen fridge, we'll have a look at some mental health resources that we have here in Australia. First of all, stress. Most of us know the research that suggests stress has some negative impacts on both our physical and our mental health. But some of us might be surprised to hear that it also lowers our immune system too. Chronic stress can be really problematic for us. And during this period, it's gonna be really important to start to become aware, so identify what signs of stress that are running through your system but also to take some action on managing our stress during this time. That's what we're gonna be looking at today. The good news is stress can be managed. Let's have a look at why. A lot of people think that stress is something that happens to them and they're surprised to hear that actually, it's our body's physiological response to an event or what psychologists would call a stressor that's happening around us. And it's when we perceive that we have little control or little resources to cope. So if you think about the current stresses that are happening in the world at the moment, they're pretty real. We've got health stresses, we've got financial stresses. These things are happening around us. Where it's important to take note is how is that happening to you physiologically? Are you noticing that you've got some foggy brain? Are you noticing that your heart is racing a little bit faster, that you've got sweaty palms? These are all signals that your body is kicking into a stress response. So when you notice that, that's the first piece, that's awareness, and that's great. The second piece is to start and think about, okay, what can I accept that can't be changed and what can I action? And the next couple of strategies are gonna be around exactly that. Once you know that you've got that stress response kicking off and that you're feeling overwhelmed and a bit heightened and a little bit distressed, we can use one of my favorite strategies. This one's by Stephen Covey, who's not a psychologist, but I think he really points to that idea of, of the stress physical response being out of our control. And so what we want to do is start to think about all the things that are back in our control. Now, I used to leave it at that, but just lately I've recognized that there's a need to add in a little bit more and that's what's in our compassionate and conscious control. This is not about hoarding people, <laughs> but what can we actually put back into our control that makes us feel like we've got things covered? You know, we've got this. First of all, let's think about what's out of our control. Well, that's easy. The state of the world for starters, that's out of our control. It's out of our control how many items get put up on the newsfeed about what's happening with COVID. That's out of our control. What's in our control? In our control is how often we flick through our newsfeed. In our control is what kind of social media channels we're following at the moment. In our control is what we choose to share with our kids and the times that we sit down and have meaningful, connected conversations with them and really listen to what's going on for them. Out of our control, let's think again, the fact that the shopping centers are missing some, you know, essential ingredients. In our control, we can call a friend. Hey, have you got any spare? Do you mind dropping it over? Or I've got some spare. Let me drop it over to you. Random act of kindness boosts our optimism and theirs as well. So starting to notice of the stressor, what is our response and what can we put back in our control? 
and what do we need to accept that's out? Focusing in on what's in is going to help you to alleviate some of those stress symptoms and help you feel, like I said again, that you got this. I know it sounds really simple, but even little things like choosing what you want to wear, making a meal plan, having a routine for your day, deciding who you're going to call, all of these things are in our control. The more we can focus in on those, the better we're going to feel. The second one, I love. I know we've all been raised in this let's hustle hard world and the more productive we are, the more meaning we have in our lives. But I want to debunk that, especially at the moment as our lives are rapidly changing and we're bringing in new information on a minute by minute basis. It's going to be really important to employ what I like to call a not to do list. So as you start to feel overwhelmed, have a look at all the things that are running through in your mental list of things that you expect yourself to do and grab a big fat red marker. Have a think to say, does this need to actually be done today? Does it need to be done by me? And does it need to be done right now? If it doesn't need to be right, done right now, take it off your to-do list, park it over there. If it doesn't need to be done by you, is there an opportunity that you can delegate? At the end of the day, we're all dealing with what are some rapidly changing circumstances and people in general are pretty understanding. Drop someone an email if you need to come back to something or ask if you need some help. But again, this is about being compassionate, and kind and mindful of other people. The reverse is true. If you notice that somebody else has got a huge to-do task, then what can you do to help to lighten the load? Reach out to your friends, reach out to your colleagues and reach out to your family as well. Okay, so there's some practical strategies for you to understand what stress is, what it looks like, and how you can learn to accept those responses and bring some of it back into your control and action the rest. I wanna take you now through one of my favorite activities because sometimes we just can't think our way out of our physiological response. Mindfulness has so much study and research behind its positive effects. It helps to lower the stress response and help us regain that sense of calm. It helps to switch back on our thinking brain too after we've had a mindful breathing exercise. The reason I like mindful breathing is because our breath is something that we can take with us wherever we go. So take some time wherever you are right now. We're just going to take five simple breaths just to regain the sense of calm. If you like, you can close your eyes. That's what I'm going to do. But wherever you are, make sure you're feeling comfortable in your seat. You can spend some time wiggling your toes on the floor, feeling connected to the ground. You can have your hands in your lap, perhaps facing up. And for the moment, while we're feeling relaxed, we're going to turn our attention inwards towards our breath. Take a breath in through your nose at your own pace. And when you're ready, you can breathe out through your mouth. And again, in through your nose and out through your mouth. You keep going, a couple more breaths. As you turn your attention to your breath, you may start to notice that your mind wanders and that's okay, our minds are incredibly busy things. All I want you to do is turn your attention when you notice those thoughts back to your breathing. Let's take one more together, breathe in and out. When you're ready, you can wriggle your toes, open your eyes, and come back and join me. I don't know about you, but I feel more relaxed already. It's amazing how much taking the time for some mindful, intentional breathing can just help to rebalance and recharge us. There are some fantastic mindfulness apps and I really recommend you get amongst them if you haven't already. For kids, Smiling Mind and Headspace as well. Not Headspace as in the mental health group, but Headspace and meditation app, although the mental health group is great, but also just not necessarily a mindfulness app. Uh, Buddhify is another really great app. Find something that works for you and when all else fails, remember, you can just go back to your breathing. Now time for some of my favorite well-being interventions from the science of positive psychology. You may have heard recently the attitude of gratitude and there's a reason it's caught on. Research has shown that when we pay attention to three things that we're grateful for each and every day, we show boosts in our optimism, 
our numbers of positive think thoughts and our well-being as well. And we know that boost in our well-being is protective for our immunity and for our cognitive functioning, our attention, and also for our overall mood and mental health. So it's a simple exercise. Just think about three things that you're grateful for. The trick is to think about, if you can, something different every day. So here in this picture, I've got someone who's just grateful for their, for their health and they're really paying attention to how they're feeling on the inside, grateful to be here in this moment. Grateful for the puppy dogs, okay? So we can't high five everybody at the moment with social distancing, but I reckon my Max and Murphy are pretty, pretty okay with cuddles. And for me, being grateful to live near the ocean, that at any time I like, I can hear those waves. What are you grateful for? This is an awesome activity to do each and every day with your kids as well, and at home with your families, or even if you're having a chat, good way to break up the conversation. We know that during this time, connection is going to look different, but it is so important for our sense of well-being. As humans, longitudinal studies have shown that the greatest protective factor for our health are the social bonds that we have and the people that we're connected with. And during this time, I think it's okay to get a little bit creative. All right, so we won't be having a face-to-face -face coffee necessarily with everybody. Some people are going to have to bunker down. And as social distancing becomes stronger and stronger, what does it look like to have our coffees online? This morning, mum and I, we had a Zoom chat um, and we had our coffee virtually. And that's okay. Getting creative about how to connect, I think, is going to be where we're all going to come together during this next period of time and share our ideas as well. We're setting up some social media platforms so that you as our community can do exactly that because we know that you're a creative lot and that you're a collaborative lot and that you are desperate to share your ideas too. And we can't wait to hear them all. There are some fantastic apps online for those of you who are starting to work remotely but still want to be bringing your teams together. Uh, I've put down donut.com. They do a great job of helping you to tee up your teammates and assign a coffee date and then give you all the virtual platforms that you need to be able to have a virtual catch up and then share it with the team afterwards as well. People are doing some really cool things. This is my favorite strategy. We rise by lifting others, celebrating what somebody has done for you in a way that where you're grateful. Yes, it adds on to those gratitudes, but this is about connecting back in with them as well. So we get the double bang for the buck. We've got our levels of, so, uh, of um, social connectedness, but also our gratitude. But the simple, simple task of calling someone saying, hey, you know what, you really made a difference to my day or writing them an email. And it doesn't need to be someone that made a difference to your day today either. Having to think about somebody who's had an impact in your life and taking two minutes to write them a text message, write them an email, or even pick up the phone and let them know is super important, not only for your own well-being, but to touch their hearts as well. It is definitely one of my favorite well-being exercises. So we've got mindfulness, we've got uh, being grateful, three things you're grateful for, staying connected, and taking time out to say thanks to someone that you care about. That's only three or four of our favorite well-being interventions, plus some stress tips that we really hope will be helpful for you as we navigate our way through this period of change. But we have got so many more, so do stay connected and look out for more of these very casual, um, but hopefully informative and helpful webinars coming to you soon, along with our community groups that we'll be setting up online so that we can share and scale as much as we know from the science of positive psychology to help you connect to strategies that boost your well-being and the well-being of those around you and also help you to stay connected and live your most meaningful life. For those of you who feel like you do need some more support, it's really important to reach out to someone like your GP. They're really well placed to help understand what's going on for you, help you to understand, for them to understand and to point you in the right direction for where support is. That might look like teeing up with a psychologist and having some one-to-one -one sessions, or it might look like getting your hands on some more detailed resources around your well-being. If you can't, for whatever reason, get in touch with your GP, there are some fantastic resources available through Beyond Blue. The numbers are there, so take them down. Lifeline, and of course, if you really need the suicide callback service, all of these services are free and available to us here in Australia. If you are joining in from overseas, again, get in touch with your GP and reach out to somebody who you know um, can help you out with your mental health.
Now more than ever, it's so important that we stay connected. And if you'd like to stay connected with us, I'd love to hear from you. One of my most welcome distractions is a conversation or an email with somebody who gets as excited about looking after mental health for themselves and others as I do. So please reach out. Our email address is there. You can follow us online, Facebook, Instagram, at Posify Group. Um, and yeah, stay connected, stay compassionate, stay kind and be courageous. We're all moving through this together. And I am truly confident that at the other end, we'll look back and go, wow, look how much we evolved. See you soon. 